Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another chapter of Experiencer Interviews. And today we have the lovely Bonnie Jean Mitchell coming to us from Uruguay. Bonnie is the founder of AlienAbductionHelp.com and co-founder of AwakenVideo.org. She is a researcher, author, and lifelong contactee. Along with her husband, John, Bonnie discovered a psychological and digital form of mnemonic mind control on electronic devices that can literally reprogram the human mind. For over 20 years, she's given advice to those living through paranormal and metaphysical experiences. She wrote the book, Journey with the Star People, in 2005, and she published her new book, The Shift, in 2021, in synchronicity with the actual spiritual shift and ascension of mankind. This latest book is the handbook for anyone who needs guidance through the current paradigm shift in consciousness. So, Bonnie, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Annick. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I, yeah, I'm really, really, uh, I was looking forward to this uh, the entire week and uh, I'm really glad it, it's finally happening. Um, so, yeah, we talked about earlier that uh, your first book and the, the, the new book that just came out, The Shift, would be like part one and part two to all the experiences that happened to you uh, in your life. Yes, basically, um, I've had a whole lifetime of this happening. Started when I was four years old and I'm 53 now. You so look lovely. Got for two books out of that. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so did uh, most of your experiences happen to you while you were living in the U.S.? Because you're in Uruguay um, right now. So no, no, it doesn't matter where I live. They, no matter where I've moved all my life, they still happen the same way. Yeah. So did um, so? At what age did everything start for you? Well, um, at four. Yeah, so what happened was um, when I was little, I used to do this thing at night where when my parents would tuck me in and say goodnight to me, and, um, they'd close the door and I, then I'd be in this dark room. And I wasn't scared, but really curious about, you know, what's going on in this dark room. I could feel that things were there, even though I couldn't see them. So I would keep my eyes open for as long as I could until I fell asleep. So I did this and I, I started to see things in the air. It was almost like it was like a screen in front of me. Um, and I started to see things like toys and ice cream and candy and things that I really liked. But they would be in the dark room like all lit up, like they were glowing images. And sometimes I even try to like grab at them, but I, I couldn't grab them. My hand would go right through. So I, so I keep just looking into the dark and I'd see other images pop up, but then people started walking into my room, like humans. And I was just really calm about it. And um, usually it was like two people, maybe three, but they would walk right up to the side of my bed and they were very friendly and they'd start talking to me. I could see their lips moving, but I could never hear what they were saying. It was as if there was like a, a pane of glass between us or some type of wall. Like we could see each other, but like they couldn't touch me or anything and I couldn't hear them. So after they realized I couldn't hear them, they, they would smile and they would walk away. And I wonder now if maybe that could have been like my great grandparents or something, I don't know. But um, so one night when I was four years old, um, I was asleep during the night I opened my eyes and looked and these two, what I call star people now, were walking towards the foot of my bed <clears throat> and they were holding hands. So what I saw as a four-year-old was stick people, like literally stick bodies with huge round bulbous heads, but I couldn't see any of their facial features, maybe because I just didn't know what I was looking at or what, but. It was pretty scary and so I screamed and my mother came running into the room and as she came in, they just kind of vanished. So I kept doing this uh, every night. I mean, I can, was still doing it when I was like seven or eight years old and there were still people coming into my room. And, you know, something happened between the ages of four and seven where I became friends with the star people because I, my next memory is at seven when the star person came into my house and 
I had no problem just hopping right out of my bed and going with them. It was like I already had known them for a long time or something. So basically my experiences happen at night when I'm asleep. And nowadays I go out of body and I go to the etheric plane where I interact with the striped people. But a lot has happened, you know, along the way. When I was around 20 years old, the star people would come into my bedroom at night and I could usually tell when they were around because, well, I could just feel it. But I would also hear weird noises, like I call them cartoon noises, like whirs and beeps and whistles. And sometimes even like, I could hear like, people singing, almost like people were singing like far away, but mm. it was close. I was mm -hmm. kind of eerie, but you know, like a magical kind of feeling. And so I knew when they were close, but they would come into my room and um, before I was even asleep sometimes. And what they did was they were teaching me how to raise my frequency because we had to be on the same frequency to interact with each other. So when it started out, they were lowering their frequency and helping me raise mine so we could meet halfway. This way we could, you know, be together. Um, but over the years, I learned how to do it myself. And so now I just, I just go out of body and I meet with them. How do we know that we're at the right frequency? And how do we know that we're doing the actual, you know, something that's actually helping out? How do we know we're at the right frequency? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you're not at the right frequency, then you, you won't see them. Uh, you can't meet with them. Uh, the other thing that happened during that time when I was around 20, um, if I got scared, like if I was getting ready for bed and I you know, turned the lights off, I, if I felt a little anxious, I would run down the hallway and jump into my bed and just pull the covers over my head. And because I felt you know, a little scared or something and they wouldn't come, they wouldn't, they just wouldn't come. It didn't work out because I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to get there, you know, to meet with them. Okay. So I guess, you know, you know, when you're at, at the right frequency, if, if you're having visitations, if you're able to. Okay. Um, the thing is when I, uh, in 2012, we thought it was, you know, the end of the world. And I, I used to meditate a lot and, you know, send my energy to the planet and, and whatnot. And one time um, I went to bed Now I wasn't really expecting anything. Uh, I was just meditating. And uh, as soon as I go to bed, as soon as I close my eyes, I see behind my left eyelid, uh, a sort of black and white box, like, a, like it, something was being projected at the back. And I, you know, I open my eyes like that. And, you know, I realize it's really on my left eye. And what I'm seeing is the side in that black box, like it was an old in black and white TV. And there was a side view of an old typewriter. And somebody was typing, you know, those typewriters that you, with the cylinders that you have to, you know, we saw that because, yeah. you know, we're old. And uh, so, yeah, we, uh, I saw that and I had the feeling that whoever was showing me that wanted me to, to blog my stories, my experiences. Oh, cool. So the day after I go on the, uh, like a, a, a site that a friend of mine used to, to, to write her stories on and I do the same. And so that same night, evening, I, uh, before going to bed, I start meditating again and uh not expecting anything i just go to bed and the same projection happens but instead of seeing a like an old you know black and white box with a typewriter i'm seeing two hands shaking on it so what i got like, from job. that's it <laughs> and after that nothing happened after that and you know from that moment on that's why i'm on this path now to to help people and uh, you know share experiences and this is what you know one of the reasons why i'm here and doing this show but uh, it's, so again, it was like raising your vibration to a certain level. And, uh, so yeah, stuff happens. Um, yeah. can you talk about, you know, any like specific, really cool, uh, uh, thing that happened to you when you were a kid? Um, because I, I'm only like a quarter in your book, but, and it's really amazing folks, you know, those that want to get, I'm going to buy a, like a hard copy, but you spoke about this because a lot of the stuff that, you know, you're using all the right words. And everything that's in it, it's, oh my God, she's legit. She's legit. She's legit. I, I, can, I, I started reading. Oh the book. yeah, I'm legit. Uh, yeah, I, I started reading the book yesterday for the interview because I was working, working on other stuff during the week. And uh, I know another interview that just came out. And uh, so I, I, that's the only time I had really was uh, like yesterday and this morning. And I had trouble putting the, the, the EPUB book down. And um, 
Now you talked you talked about dolls that came alive. Oh gosh. And I thought yeah. that that was totally new to me. I said, oh my God, I need to talk about this. So can you get into that? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah that's when I was about seven or eight years old. And so when I'm doing this thing at night where I see people coming into my room and everything. So one night I'm laying there waiting to go to sleep. I'm, it's a dark room. Got my eyes open, just waiting for something to happen. And I was, I was looking at the dolls on my shelf. I saw that their faces started to move like they're they start blinking their eyes and moving their mouths and i was like oh this is this is too much i like pull the blankets over my head and but when i look back they were still doing it and i it really was the star people because i could feel kind of like a changing of my my awareness like i was shifting into some other frequency or something but as I was doing that, these dolls literally came to life. They stood up and they came off of the shelf. And as they were stepping off of the shelf, they grew and they were star people, like, you know, three, three and a half foot tall or whatever, star people. And they walk right up to my bed. And I was like, oh, okay, it's just those guys. So <laughs> I'm not worried, you know, I don't want my dolls to come to life, but okay. These are, these are my friends, the star people. And they came like, one came up to... Uh, like where my pillow was and one stood at the foot of my bed and I just automatically knew okay I'm, I'm gonna hop out of bed and I'm gonna go with these guys and so I did no problem I wasn't afraid or anything and the one next to me held one hand and then the other guy held my other hand and we walked right out the front door really? I don't really remember where we went but that was the kind of thing that would happen to me at night oh. yeah but, you know, I just thought of something that's really cool. And I'm not even sure that I put this in the book. So this is a little extra. But um, so I guess I was about nine years old. I was getting ready for school one morning and waiting for the bus to come. And my both my parents were home. And so my parents stepped out on the front doorstep. And they're like, Bonnie, come out here. So I went out. And they were looking at this object in the sky, like right over our house. So there were like some clouds that were pretty low. What I saw when I looked up was almost like white milk, milky glass. It looked like um, the bottom of a craft um, that, was, that was white, but you could see people or somebody walking around. You could see the shadows of people walking back and forth like we could see the bottom, like their legs and stuff. And my parents did not know what this was. And they were, I remember them talking about it and they were confused about it. And they said, well, maybe it's a, uh, a dirigible, you know? Uh, and that's the only thing they could come up with. And so we watched this thing and then it went really silently. It was just hovering there, but all we could see was the bottom of it because of the cloud. It, so it went back up into the cloud and the cloud like just closed underneath of it. And we kept watching and it came back down again. So we see this structure, you know, it wasn't that huge. It was maybe like 30 foot in diameter or something, but we watched it until it went back up in the cloud and it silently and just went away. But we never did figure out what that was. Wow. Those type of balloons, whatever, they just they don't go up and down like that. No, they're not like that controllable. They don't like hold still, really still in the air right, right over your house. No. No. <laughs> oh, that's no, a but that's just my mom and dad trying to come up with something. Okay. But they were they were pretty, you know, blown away by that. Wow. And I, I was just nine years old and I was like, okay, my bus is here. Bye. Yeah. My stuff started to happen at the age of three. Because I, I say three because my I'm four years older than my brother. So uh, yeah, I was like, a, well, he wasn't born yet. So uh, so I, I, I remember telling my, my mom at night when I uh, going to bed that there were people coming to see me at, at night. I don't remember the faces, but that was a theme that would come back a lot. And I was so afraid to look in the dark knowing that they were there, or at least somebody was watching me, that I would sleep with my entire body tucked against the wall really, really tight. And I, I didn't move. I didn't move at all during the night. And I slept that way up until around the age of 11. Wow. And uh, yeah, eventually it stopped because um, I think it's around a time that 
uh, we, we changed cities. And uh, so like I'm like early teens. And I, at night, I remember that I feel that I'm, I'm lying on my bed, but my feet are in the air at a 45 degree angle. And I realize that my feet are in the air and I, I cry out no in my head. And as, as soon as I do that, I feel my, my feet fall back to the bed with a thump bang. Okay. But then I, I, good, I, 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 I continue no. sleeping after that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you can say no if you yeah. don't want to go. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't know anything at the time. So now right. I say yes, right. though, but... Uh, yeah so um yeah. did you ever go through walls when they would come and get you yeah yeah i went through walls a lot or, or closed windows or yeah go, they'd float me right out of my bed right through the wall outside into their craft whatever they were on yeah that was pretty normal that that happened a lot um in the early days like in my early 20s um when they were teaching me about things. I think now, now that I have more experience and I just, I just go out of body. And um, so going through walls isn't that big of a thing anymore. It's so, so normal. But um, when I was around 20, I guess it was 19 to about 24 years of age. It was a period of like five years. I went through this time that I call the Star People School. Um, I kind of had a trigger effect happen, I think. When I was around 19, first thing I did was I started writing my dreams down because I read a book by Edgar Cayce and he was, he was big into dream symbology and creating your own de- dream dictionary because it's really personal to each person. Um, but I started writing my dreams down and I noticed that there were these experiences that were happening that weren't normal dreams at all. Um, I was already seeing the star people, but I, I guess I had forgotten a bit about what happened in my childhood with the star people. And so I could see that some weird things were happening. But then I got this book, um, Intruders by Bud Hopkins. And I tried to read that. I got like five pages in and I had to put it down because it was too scary. Um, but after a couple of months or so, I thought, okay, I'm going to read this thing. And so I, I did. And I, I realized this is what's happening to me. Although I was not a victim like the lady in the book Intruders. And I also read the book Communion by Whitley Stryver. That really resonated with me a bit more. But um, it seemed like after I had that realization with the Bud Hawkins book, I started having visits like twice a week. It was, it was intense. I mean, it was just insane. And, and not only were the star people coming to see me, but then I started seeing military people who would sometimes show up after the star people left and they were asking me questions like, uh, what did you do with the star people? What did they say to you? And they wanted to know everything. I actually told them for a while, I told them everything until I realized I probably don't want to be doing this. And then, you know, psychic attackers started showing up. So, but for about a five year period there, I was having like one or two visits a week and plus military showing up, you know, but this was all in an alternate reality. This was like after I went to sleep at night. Uh, so mostly stuff ha- happening out of body. Um, But the star people started teaching me, first of all, how to face my fear and not let my fear control me. They taught me how to defend myself against this military attack or against, you know, anybody, even if they were star people or bad aliens, you know, they taught me how to defend myself. And then they started showing me how to manipulate energy. That's what I was calling it back then, energy manipulation. And it started out where I would just hold out my hand and they'd say, okay, now create a ball of energy in your hand. Like that was the first task. And once I could do that, then I could turn it into something like a flower. And that's what I did was I'm creating flowers in my hand or, or an apple or orange, something like that. And as they were teaching me Um, psychic self-defense I would start creating a knife in my hand which would 
sometimes just pop up automatically. And, um, you know, but I could, I could make it appear or disappear just by focusing my intention on it. So we went through this training period with them. And um, once I got to a certain point, and, and of course there were, was a lot of psychic testing and, and contactees, you know, are put through this kind of thing, like uh, testing to see how, how psychic you are or how intuitive you are and, and how you can focus energy and use those abilities. And if I passed a test, I'd go up to the next level and I just kept progressing and progressing. And, and the other, other humans were with me. Um, in the beginning, there was a bunch. Now, not so many, but um, everybody had the same opportunity. And if you passed the test, you went up to the next test. But if you didn't pass the test, they just brought you home and you didn't come back again. Oh. So once I got to a certain point with this Star People School, um, I actually went to a graduation ceremony with them and that was it. I graduated and they said that, okay, you don't need us anymore. You're on your own now. So we're going to go and help other people, you know, wake up. And they, I had asked them, why did you come and visit me? You know, when I was a little girl, why, why me? And they said, because you were awake. And I realized now that being awake, you know, awake and aware also is connected to your third eye being open and working. So it seems like these star people I've been involved with are spiritual teachers. So after this, um, after this graduation thing, I actually didn't see them for a little while. They would, they would come maybe, you know, once every couple of months or so. Um, but I was going out on my own and doing things out of body and really progressing on my own. And after um, a number of years, I finally got to a level where they started working with me again. They were waiting for me to get to this level on my own. And I did. And that's kind of bringing us up to present day. Like the past 10 years have been about <laughs> so intense. The last 10 years have really been about the shift, the awakening that we're going through right now. And they did start teaching me about that um, back in like starting in 1988 uh, when I was 20. Um, they started telling me that there would be this shift in consciousness, um, which would also bring about physical upheavals on the earth. And uh, at the time, I was calling it earth changes, uh, but they also used the term the shift. And so I also got the impression that the majority of humans were not going to make it through this shift, that you really, really had to focus and, you know, work on yourself spiritually and try your best to be in a good vibrational frequency, you know, of love and light. And this is how you really get through the shift. This is what it's really about. So the past 10 years have been about focusing on the shift and the whole energy manipulation thing of learning how to create things in my hand has turned into learning how to manifest reality. It's, and since I work with them on the etheric plane while I'm out of body, they're teaching me, they have been teaching me there uh, how to create things. And the first thing I created actually was a tent because I like to go camping. And I thought that's an easy thing. It's got two sides. <laughs> and so I was there out of body on the etheric plane, which I, I call the alternate reality because it's my alternate reality. <clears throat> so I'm there and I'm, I'm on the etheric plane, actually pulling this material out of the air, which I'm calling ether. And I don't know if you've like, heard about this stuff called ectoplasm. People used to see it in seances. It's yeah. like a white cottony substance. That's like what I was working with. I would get this cottony stuff and I flattened it into sheets. And this is what I made my tent with from the top down. But that was just my first little practice run. I started creating a lot of other things. And then they're really teaching me that whatever happens on the etheric plane is going to manifest physically. 
And so I am also I am seeing now that I am absolutely creating my reality, you know, my reality bubble. And I can absolutely manifest reality. And it's it's something, you know, you've really got it. It's like through repetition, you get this idea in your head. You've got to really know it to, to make it happen. And it takes many years to to be practicing it, to really to realize, wow, I'm actually doing this. Like, you know, anyway, that's where I'm at right now. And so my new book, The Shift, is all about what we're going through right now, what the world's going through, and we're going through this great awakening. And um, I'll, I'll talk about this a bit more. And um, do you have any questions or you want to say? Anything? Well, yeah, a lot. Because, oh. <laughs> <Actually. laughs> you know, you've, uh, you know it, it's really good regarding your, your first book, because that's the only one that I had the chance to, to review. So, uh, you know, thus far, but right. what type of uh, star people have you had the chance to encounter? Um, <clears throat> the ones that I work closely with and I consider family would be called Pleiadian. Okay. Um, I'm just really not sure if they are physically coming from the Pleiades or if that's more of a multidimensional type of thing. I, I tend to think that it is, um, <clears throat> you know, they are multidimensional. So are we actually, and we can move our consciousness into into our astral body or etheric body and we can experience life there you know if we can keep our awareness and the star people they also shift they shift into different frequencies and different dimensions so um yeah my family are, are the pleiadians and i've also met who i who i assume to be um zetas uh they're kind of they can, they can vary in height. They're something like maybe about four foot tall, five foot tall, and they, they've got the pretty big heads and big black eyes, but their skin is more like tannish or, you know, like a light tan color. The Palladians are kind of, they look more human, um, but they, their skin is lighter, um, they're, they're skinnier. Some of them don't have hair. Some of them have really thin blonde hair or white hair and they usually have blue eyes, sometimes black eyes. You know, there's, there's variation. Um, I've, I've encountered the grays plenty of times, uh, the reptilians, um, different, just different types that I don't really have a label for, even some different types of animals that they've had on board their craft. So there's, there's been a lot, of, a lot of different star people that I've encountered. Um, and sometimes, you know, some of them I've only seen once or twice, but like, like the Palladians, I see them pretty often. And there's one of them that I call my star mother, because I really feel like somehow she is partly my mother, along with my human mother. But, um, okay, yeah. Well, have I, you I've met mantids? I, I have, yes. Oh. I, I'll tell you experience with the mantids. Um, I met him a couple times, but one time I had a had very clear recollection of it. It was, it was they were very friendly towards me. Um, so one night I went out of body and I just woke up in a room full of mantids. Uh, they were, they, they looked black. Their skin was like black. They were like black mantids. Uh, they were pretty tall, I'd say at least six foot some taller, you know. Um, so it, it seemed like I was inside of a cafeteria. Like they were all sitting down at tables. There, there must have been, I don't know, a hundred of them. And I was walking down this aisle. I didn't see anybody eating anything. I don't know why I thought it was cafeteria. It just looked like it. But they're all sitting at these tables talking. And when they saw me, they, they just all got quiet and just stared at me. And so I started Luckily, you know, I kind of have this like childlike nature or something, which works for me, <laughs> especially in weird situations like that. I, I found that if I can just be happy, you know, with love in my heart, then I don't really have any problems. So I'm walking down this aisle and they're all looking at me and there was a gray sitting there at one of the tables, just one gray. 
And I stopped right next to him and I looked at him and I smiled and I was thinking, oh, he is so cute. And I just wanted to pat him on the head. And I was like, no, I better not do that because I don't want to embarrass him in front of the Alex Mantis. <laughs> so I just smiled and I kept walking. So I went to the back of this room and around a little corner and was actually what looked like a bar. And um, there was a mantid standing back there behind the bar. And I, I knew that she was a female somehow. And um, she seemed a little confused to see me there. And I just walked up and I smiled and I asked her if I could have some ice cream. And she was kind of looked at me for a minute. She's like, okay. <laughs> and she went into a back room and then she came out and she had something that was similar. It was like a, a it wasn't ice cream. It was like frozen water with flavor in it or something. And so, um, she ended up sitting at one of the tables with me and she had a puzzle. It was almost like something for a, a kindergartner for like a little kid, like a little wooden puzzle. Well, she had two puzzles. One was the human body, human skeleton. And the other one was the mantid body and, and their skeleton. And so she sat there and did these puzzles with me, like a little learning thing, wow. you know? So that was, that was my experience. I remember with the mantids. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, you're so lucky. No, you're so I blessed. Know. It's cool. <laughs> really, it's oh wow. I'm getting all the you know goosebumps and, and whatnot. Uh, you've uh, you've had this sort of um, train experience that I think you were being taken on a train to a rock show. Was that yeah, a sort that of was... cover? Uh, what happened? Right. Okay, so that was back in the early days. That was like you know I was around. 21 years old or 22 maybe so uh so what happened was i went to bed that night and then i i woke up i was still in my bed but things had changed in my house because there was a big party going on in my kitchen so i you know very confused walked out there to the kitchen and uh, people were dancing around and stuff and they were all excited because we were going to go to this rock concert or something so the next thing I know, we're on a train and I'm like, wow, like, how did I get here? And it was very confusing, but there I was. And the same people were on the train car with me. They were humans. Um, but it almost seemed like, even at that point, I was starting to get the idea that these weren't real people. It's almost like they were background people, like just characters. And so they were all excited dancing around. They were saying that we were going to a big concert. And I thought, oh, well, that'll be fun because I'm a musician and I, I love music. But at the same time, I could tell something was not right and I couldn't figure out how I got there. And so I decided that I didn't want to be there. So I wanted to put an end to this. So I found, um, I either found or created uh, some type of a, a cord that I pulled like a break to stop the train. And I pulled on that and the train came to a stop. And in a few minutes, a couple of star people came and, and grabbed me, the one on each side of me, they're kind of like dragging me to the front of the front of the train. At least that's the way it appeared to me. And they got me up there and um, Yeah, just the whole scene changed. I don't really even remember what happened. You probably know better than I do because you're reading the book, but I've had so many experiences. But yeah, it was like, it was what you might call um, a fake scenario, kind of like they made up this fake scene. So I'm not sure why, maybe so I would go along with it or so I wouldn't be frightened or whatever the reason, but I, I saw through that and I, you know, I stopped it. You do talk about, I think, a, 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 an Indian or somebody jumping to a fire. Okay. Yeah. So, so in that part, I was, I was sitting on top of a hill. I was outside sitting on top of the hill and also kind of dazed and confused and as to how I got there. And I looked out the bottom of the hill and there were what looked like two Native American Indians dance around this fire. And I looked down to them and, and they were actually dancing in the fire. 
And so it was just weird, but I could feel the heat coming up from the fire and everything. So this Native American walks up the hill to me and sits down next to me, facing me. And he, um, he started like meditating. And I just kept my eyes open. I was staring at him, so I didn't know what was happening. And uh, I said, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he opened his eyes and he looked at me, he's like, and he just chuckled and he's like, well, because it's time for it. And I noticed he was holding these implements in, in his hands. One would look like a bicycle pump to me, maybe about this long, but it was all white. It looked like plastic. And then the other thing was kind of like a, a needle, about this long. And um, he, he jokingly asked me, do you want me to zap the zits off of your face? Because it had some pimples. And I was like, no. And he just laughed. So that's <laughs> that's how that went. And then I think at the end of that one, I, I woke up in a room with the star people. I was laying on a bed, but it was more like a metal table. And I had my blanket with me, which kind of made me comfortable. I think that was their idea to help me be comfortable. But you know, I always knew that something wasn't right there. And that's kind of been the way my experience has gone throughout the years is that I've, I've been able to see through it and see past it. And uh, I haven't gone along with everything they wanted. Once you get through the book, the second book, you'll see I, I ended up, you know, I could decide when I wanted to go with them or, or if I didn't. And sometimes I'd just show up on my own without their invitation i i would sometimes sh just show up in different places i don't even normally don't even plan on it it's just kind of random um you know which is not great all the time because i've you know accidentally just manifested myself in an underground military base and that ain't so great so yeah my experiences have mostly been positive and um but there's definitely been some negative ones in there. Um, some with greys, some with reptilians and definitely uh, military abduction and military psychic attack. Were the, uh, the blue robots, would you consider that a, uh, like a bad thing? Cause I think you had an operation mm -hmm. regarding that. I did. I, they didn't, they were like kind of neutral entities. They were, they were friendly towards me and they were just doing a job. Like they were assigned this task. That was the only time I ever saw them. <clears throat> they were pretty short, maybe like three, three and a half foot tall, and they had blue skin and they had big round heads, but uh, they didn't have the big black eyes. They were pretty small, like round, pretty small round eyes. <clears throat> and they were wearing coveralls. And so they had me in this, what looked like the inside of a craft to me. Um, they were standing at this counter, which looked like it had electronics on it, maybe some type of computer equipment, I'm not sure. And they were, they were doing something with information gathering, which was my impression. And so when they were done with that, one of them walked over to me and he held me by my right arm and he helped me walk over. I, it wasn't very far into this other area, maybe like 10 foot forward. And he asked me to step down into this little indention in the floor, maybe like five inches deep. And he asked me to look at the back of this electronic device that was in front of me. And I heard this loud bang, saw a flash of light. And I thought, oh, he's working on the back of that TV set. <laughs> but he wasn't working on the back of the TV set. That was the back of my head that he was working on. <laughs> so you see how, how things get confused. So yeah, I, I woke up um, and, and about like a week later, I had, I had a lump on the back of my head. And so I knew that was from them. I figured it was some type of implant or something. And I actually did not do anything about that till about 13 years later when I went to a doctor to have it removed. And he cut it out of my head. And what came out was this big ball of white, fatty wax basically that my own body had created it would it, supposedly the body does that to protect you from a foreign object but 
even when I was right there when the doctor took this thing out of my head, he broke it open and there didn't appear to be anything inside of it. I think there was at one time something inside of it, but it was, it was gone. So, but I did get that cut out eventually or, you know, or it worked its way into my brain before that. Mm. Parts. So you think it's, yeah, it was probably an implant. Yeah. yeah. I, I've had many, many implants. Some are from the star people, some are from military. Do you feel them actually? Uh, what? Well, do you like, do you know, um, how do you, how do you know their implants are like, do you feel them on the skin? Are they bumps? Uh, yeah. Um, some of them have come and gone over the years, but even today I still have some I'm aware of. Um, yeah, I can feel them under the skin. I, I got one right inside of my nostril one time that that's in the first book. Um, yeah, I had a, a very bad dream one night that was actually military and they put this implant um, in my nose. When I woke up in the morning, my nose was so sore, I could not touch it. It was really painful for probably two or three days. And, uh, but once I could feel it right inside of my nose there, it was, it was about maybe a quarter of an inch long. It seemed like a very thin steel rod, like a tiniest little metal rod. And I felt that thing over the course of a couple of weeks and it moved and it moved. And I, I kind of lost track of it. Um, and I think it probably went up. I think that's probably what it did. Yeah, but normally I can tell when there's implants. I, I had one in my arm before that for many years it would actually pulse and it would, it would be like a burning, itching sensation under my skin. And um, I tried this maneuver, which actually did work a couple of times um, with some friends of mine. We, we used energy um, to basically burn the implant out to overload it with energy and just break it. It was still in my body, but it wasn't bothering me anymore. Um, but basically, you know, you can move energy throughout your body. You can, you can move it up and down your arm just with your thoughts and you can feel it. Um, but you can do that by yourself or you can have friends help you or someone who knows about um, energy work, you know, subtle energy with the body. You can actually push energy into implant and overload it and, and break it. I've, I've had that work a couple of times. Did um, now you, you had something happen with your eye, I think like a piece of skin that might have been ripped off. What happened with that? Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly how that happened now, but I woke up one morning and my eye was really sore, like I had something in it. And I kept rubbing my eye to try to get this thing out, but I never could. So I went to uh, the local family doctor who had known me for a long time. And he, he looked at my eye and he said, what the heck did you do to your eye? There's a scoop taken out of it, like a scoop mark. And I, I was like, oh, I don't know. I did it in my sleep. So yeah, there's definitely those times when I would wake up with... <clears throat> like a little scar on the back of my hand. Um, so it was like during the night, the star people would like do a test or they'd take a skin sample or something. But by morning it was healed over usually. So it's pretty amazing how that works, you know, because I'm pretty sure I'm out of body when that happens. Like I'm in my etheric body, but this is what the star people work with. And coming back to the physical world, it's manifested on my hand, but it's healed over. So there's a, there was an experience that I had early on in my early twenties when I figured out that this wasn't strictly physical. But before that, I, I didn't know. But so I, I knew ahead of time before they were gonna come. I knew like two weeks ahead of time before they were gonna show up one night. So I set up my video camera at the end of the hallway um, 
you know, to see what I could get. So I went to sleep that night. Everything was normal. And I did have a visitation that night. And what happened was, uh, I, during the night, I sat up in the bed and I looked down the hallway and I saw a star person. And uh, this star person came up behind my camera and did something to the camera. Um, and I think before that, I also sat up in the bed. At least this is what happened in my memory of the visitation. So the next morning I got up and I immediately watched the tape that I had made. And I never saw myself sit up in the bed. I just rolled back and forth normally like you do at night. And towards morning, I could hear the dogs start barking in the background. Now this happened during my experience also. Um, I could hear something running on the roof and I also heard the neighbor's dogs bark. So on the videotape the next morning I'm watching it, I hear the dogs start barking. And then the can I hear this wet breathing noise come up behind the camera. It really was like somebody was breathing, not very well. And the camera goes to static, like the videotape goes to static for something like 30 seconds or so. And then comes back on. But I really think that that star person affected the camera even though he wasn't a physical body, but that showed me that even though I did these things during the night and I sat up in the bed and I should have been able to see that on the tape, it wasn't on the tape because I think I did that etherically, you know? So that was the big, uh, the big moment for me when I realized, okay, this isn't just a physical thing. Okay. Although things do happen physically, I, to me at this point, I feel like that world and this world blend together. And sometimes when I go out of body and I'm in the alternate reality, I, I don't even know that I'm there. I think it's physical. And the way that I test that nowadays is I, I fly or I stick my head through the wall or something like that. And I'm, I'm like, okay, well, if I can stick my head through the wall, then I guess I'm out of body. <laughs> and that's how I test it. But other than that, you know, at this point, it's, it's really blending together for me. And it makes sense because of everything I learned and, and the, where, the direction I'm going and this whole, uh, the shift, the whole teachings of the shift. And um, I, I'll go ahead and get into that if, if you're ready. Um, I, I'd like to know when you're out of body, how do you see yourself? Do you have, are you an orb or do you actually see like uh, your appendages and, and whatnot? I see, I see myself just like I am right now. I've even looked into mirrors and I can see myself. It's like, it's like my physical body, except it's a little translucent, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So I don't remember. Uh, what I feel is that I'm only seeing in front of me, like when, when I'm looking at you now, I see the, you know, the, the edge of my nose, my glasses, my, my fingers and whatnot. But when I'm out of body, all I, I'm seeing is just like what's in front right. of me. But uh, so I, I expect I'm an orb, but I don't know. Um, well, do you uh, actually see your nose and your hands? No, you don't? No. Okay. No. Well, you could be an orb. I mean, you can take different shapes mm. when you're out of body. You know, if you focus on it, I've, I've turned into a bird before. You can really? do that. Wow. But for the most part, I don't, I'm not really looking at myself when I'm out of body, but I have at times done that. I've, I've in my out of body, I've looked in the mirror at myself and it, it looks like me, uh -huh. except a little see-through. I've even looked back and seen my physical body laying in the bed a number of times. So that's pretty trippy too. Wow. <laughs> there was an instance where uh, I think you woke up or there were like 20 children in your house running around everywhere yeah that was a that was an early experience you know my early 20s and uh, you know they weren't they weren't really little children they were little star people is what they were but that's that's what you call a screen memory you know you're not remembering it exactly right yeah. <laughs> but yeah that I think that night I had a test they gave me a test on the back of my hand which didn't make any sense to me I still have the scarf from out in the back of my hand. Um, 
but that was supposed to be from what they said that was supposed to see if I was pregnant or not but I uh, which was a weird explanation because I was also uh, going through that monthly time that women go through so it didn't make any sense to me that that was their explanation like I woke up with a scar on my hand but yeah I didn't really agree with their methodology there okay. <laughs> you know okay. but yeah we, sometimes sometimes they're screen memories reading that i thought i okay they're grays and they're playful and they're curious and they want to they want to touch everything so they're picking up stuff because you know they're it's all new to them uh, my current girlfriend she gets a lot of uh, these uh, third eye visions upon waking a lot of the time she sees grays in our bedroom but they're just lifting stuff just curious oh, just touching yeah. so that made me think of that and uh but yeah, you've, uh, are you aware? Like, I know you've, uh, you've had eggs taken from you. Yeah. So did, did you ever get like phantom pregnancies? No, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. No, but I, I did end up meeting a number of hybrid children that, that were supposedly mine that I helped to create. And um, yeah, one night I met three of my hybrid children. This was a little bit later. I guess I was about, 26 or 27 and um so what happened was i went to sleep that night and i i woke up in the bed but i wasn't in the physical world i was out of body and i i felt like the star people were near and um i saw this ufo land in the side yard so i went to the front door <laughs> To see who was there, right? So these three, they kind of resembled grays, but they weren't exactly grays. They were kind of a mix, a genetic mix. They came to the front door and, you know, I told you that when they taught me energy manipulation, I was creating flowers and fruit, but also knives. And this is one of those times I did it by accident. As these three star people come to the front door, I have a knife in my hand, not knowing it really, but I did it, you know, just in case, I guess. And they got scared and they ran away. They ran back to the ship. And I was like, oh no. So oh, no. I, you know, got rid of the knife and I was like, come back. I'm sorry, come back. You know? And so they did, they came back. They were a little, you know, hesitant, but they came back to the front door and they came in the house. And I, I asked them to come into the bedroom. I sat on the bed and my, my whole family was sitting there actually with me. And these three little star people came in and it was so weird because I felt like they were children and I thought maybe that's just because they're short and I'm like no it's weird because they really feel like children I said why do you why do you seem like children why do you look like children and she was a little confused and she said because we are children <laughs> so <laughs> so these three little ones um now they were they were probably three and a half to four foot tall, but they had gray skin and their hands had little webs between the fingers and they had little bumps on their hands. I know because I held her hand, the one that there was three of them. Uh, she was like the biggest one and the most brave. The other two were kind of hiding behind her a little bit. I think they're afraid of me, maybe because I had a knife in my hand. But anyway, I, I was holding her hand and I got to see up close, like the webs between her fingers and everything. So she told me that the reason they came into the house was because their fathers were out on the ship and their fathers wanted me to go out there and interact with them. But the only way I could do that was if I gave them a label, some way for me to recognize them, something to do with the human brain, I guess. And so I all I had to do was come up with three names for them. And so I did, I came up with three names. And as soon as that happened, I my consciousness faded out, I kind of blacked out, and I woke up in this room with, which had a lot of white light and I couldn't see really clearly at first. I knew there was something right in front of me. So I just, I was calm and I stood there and I realized as I was coming to that I was looking at somebody's knee. Like this, they were standing in front of me. This was their knee. 
And I, my heart just started pounding. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is a giant. So this entity uh, leaned over and picked me up in his hands, picked me up like a little doll <laughs> and was very gentle and, and held, he held me to his chest and he was warm and he, he was very friendly and everything. There was no reason for me to panic. But I, I realized that he put a mark on the back of my head and they called it the mark of protection. And it was to help me get through the shift. That was the whole reason they came to meet with me. And then and I realized that those were my three of my own children, my hybrid children. And those were their fathers. I don't know how because they were giant, but it's hard to say how they do that because I think uh, the way they work with the genetics is you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. It's not just like human or gray together. They always mix different, a variety. Yeah, I've heard the uh, the term. Um, so you've got like, you know, the, the, the father and the mother and you've got the all. I think that's when uh, an abductee used the, uh, that, you know, there's a bit of everything, but you've got like two major ones okay. and a bit of others okay. too. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow. Yeah. Because my star mother, who's Pleiadian, I think she is a hybrid. I think she's part human. Okay. She certainly looks like it. Well, we might be, you know, we're, we're probably the same too. Like we're a bit of everything, though we don't know. Oh, you know yeah. All the junk DNA could be that too. Right. Uh, wow. Now there's, was there, there's an instance where your, your husband started panicking and started closing all the windows. Do you remember that? Uh, um i think this is when uh yeah it was a visitation i think it was the, the doctor from next door coming over to visit the doctor from next <laughs> yeah. door it's been a while back you know that was in my early 20s but um <clears throat> yeah but this was this was happening you know at night i'm out of body and i i so i walk I'm walking through the house and into the living room and the kitchen. And my husband was really panicking, locking the windows and doors. And he's, he's yelling at me. He's like, it's your fault. You invited them. It's your fault. You know, I was like, what are you talking about? And so, um, yeah, then this, this doctor from next door comes over and strangely wearing a long trench coat. And um, he turned out to be a star person. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've had so many different experiences, yeah. but the past, um, the past 10 years has really been focused on the shift. And, and I do want to talk about that. Sure. Go ahead. So <clears throat> this was really the main focus of uh, the Star People School. Like I had to start off facing my fear. Don't be afraid learn how to protect yourself, learn how to use energy. And, and then it went into learning how to manifest reality. And so what happened was on, on November 11th, 2012, um, I, I went to sleep that night, went out of body to the etheric plane and met with the star people on a ship, but it was like a human made wooden ship um, and I knew that it was time for basically getting ready to go like getting ready for the shift to happen and so I went inside of the uh, the house that's on the ship I went inside and there were other humans in there and I recognized them because they had trained with me in the star people school and there was maybe about five people and we had done this practice run a couple of times already. And I felt a little nervous. I was a little unsure about myself. And, uh, you know, because we all had a particular job that we had to do on the ship. And as it turned out, we were all doing the same job. We were helping each other with navigation. So I felt good about that. I walked out front to the bow of the ship. And my husband, John, was sitting out there, sitting out there on watch which really makes sense because uh, he was a merchant marine and in the Navy has a lot of experience on ships and doing that type of thing. Um, and he's 
also had a bunch of these experiences with me and he will be on the etheric plane with me um, learning how to manifest reality. And so also he was sitting in a chair and sitting near him in a chair was this very ancient, uh, I, I assume that these people were Pleiadian. They kind of looked Pleiadian, but this was my first time seeing them and they were like ancient people, hundreds of years old. So there was this star man, I called him. He was sitting in a chair up front. I, I said hello to him and, and he was friendly, but he was really focused on guiding us humans through this event. So he was like meditating. So I walked to the back of the ship to the stern and there were two chairs and uh, sitting in one chair was this very ancient star lady. She was the companion of the old man up front. And she smiled at me, I said hello to her. And she was almost like a grandmother type of person, very, very nice, but also very focused and kind of in a meditative state. And so I sat in the empty chair that was there for me. And so, so then I start looking around and I realize, okay, I'm on a ship and we're floating in the ocean. We're actually floating in the ocean. And in the distance, I see a city. I, I can see all the skyscrapers and the skyline and I re recognize it as New York City. And so I sit down in the chair and the star lady gave me two pairs of glasses that I could choose to wear. <clears throat> one of them was rose colored glasses. And when I looked through those, everything looked beautiful. Everything was good. And the other pair was a darker pair of glasses. And when I looked through those, it just seemed kind of dark. So I get the impression that, you know, my experience is gonna depend on my perspective. I can look at this two different ways. And so I sit in the chair and I'm looking out at New York City and the boat lifts up out of the water and it's levitating in the air. We went up maybe like 20 foot or so, not too much. And then New York City started melting. It started disappearing from the top down. The skyscrapers just started, looked like they were melting from the top down. And what took their place was these tiny little cells, just looked like little cells floating in the air. It was almost like a living organism that we we're inside of. But I got the impression like, okay, like this is, we're hitting the reset button here. Like we're going back to basic, cellular structure. And um, yeah, so I, I ended up just waking up in my bed and, and writing this down. So, you know, it was confusing because I'm watching these things happen on the etheric plane, but they're not happening physically, at least not yet. And it seems to be that they're showing me stuff way ahead of time and helping me get prepared for it way ahead of time. Um, so that was the first time of us actually uh, going through this process of watching the shift happen. Um, so then um, March 28th, 2015, I find myself on the ship again with the same, well, not the same star people, there were other star people there, but it was um, people that I had been in the star people school with I was on the back of the boat again, sitting in the same chair. But this time sitting next to me was a, a human woman who I had trained with. And we recognized each other. And we were so in tune with each other, like psychically, that we didn't have to speak with our mouths. We weren't even doing mental telepathy. It's like we just knew we were in sync. And a star person walked up to us and handed us each a piece of paper. And these were instructions for dismantling the matrix. And I knew that we weren't the only ones. There were some other humans on the boat who were doing it, but there were also others in other places who were working on the same thing. So I was sitting there in my chair. I've got the paper with the instructions for dismantling the matrix. And I start reading and I get maybe I don't know, a paragraph into it, and my eyes start fluttering, like I'm going into a, a REM state. 
of rapid eye movement. Like really, I couldn't control it. And so I just sat there, I stayed calm and I let it happen. And I was seeing so much information flash before my eyes. And what was happening was I was releasing everything about the world out of my mind. It was like a data dump, like just flushing it all out. So I was releasing everything that I knew about the world, about this reality. And then after that, I started releasing everything about my personal self, my personal beliefs about myself. You know, like we, we put certain limitations on ourselves by the roles that we take in life. I think, okay, well, this, this is my role. This is who I am. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. This is, you know, but we're so much more than that, right? So, so then I'm letting all that go, letting all of that go. The whole thing took maybe like 15 minutes and then it was done. And then uh, I opened my eyes and I felt good. Actually, I, I was still myself and I still knew who I was and everything, but I felt cleansed. I felt just like purified, like had just let everything go. And um, so the girl was still sitting there next to me and we both looked out and we could see that we were, this boat was still floating in the ocean. It was very still and very calm. Um, the sky was dark. I couldn't see anything except black in the sky. And mostly what was left was just water, just the ocean. But I could see a, a little bit of land in the distance. So this girl and I, um, we decided to hop off the ship. We knew we were out of body. So we hopped down into the water and it was only about knee deep. And then we could see a platform, like a little wooden platform with a doorway, not far off to our left. And we started walking towards that and there was light coming from the doorway and there was people talking on the other side. And we knew that basically we had just kind of reset everything. Like this was the end of the world as we knew it and we're getting ready to create a new one. But anyway, we um, walked up onto this platform and as I was going through that doorway, I woke up in my bed. Um, so the message that the star people have been giving me is that after the matrix, they're saying that this false matrix that we live inside of is going to vanish. And that the only thing that's left is water. Like the ocean is the only thing left. Although they've shown me this a number of times and I have seen a little bit of land. But this has been the focus, like the past five years is kind of urgent, really. Like they, the only time I see them really is they're coming to check on me to see how I'm doing, to see if I'm at the right level um, to be doing this, if I'm, if I'm capable to do this kind of thing and talking about the shift and preparing and all of this. And so um, September 2nd, 2016, um, same thing, I go to sleep and I go out of body and I'm, I'm in a room. Well, I'm not in a room at first, I'm just in a black void. I'm standing, I'm, I'm standing on something solid, but all around me is just blackness and this one star person standing next to me who was pretty tall, he, he could have been Pleiadian or could have been Zeta. Um, but he said to me, this is your new world. You can manifest anything you want, it's completely up to you. So you can go ahead and just create whatever you want. And so the first thing I created, ironically, was four walls around me <laughs> because I think I, the, the vastness of the void was a little too much to him. So I wanted to this room, you know, so I could feel like, okay, I have this little space to work with. And the first thing I created this, after the walls was the sky. I created the stars and the moon in the night sky because I've always liked them and I felt comfortable with that. And then the next thing I created was a bed, a comfortable bed for myself. And, and then I got in it and I felt safe. And so that was my very first time of, manifesting my brand new world. Um, so, so many things um, have happened. Like um, it's a real progression. You'll see when you read the books 
of this learning and moving up in levels of, of awareness. And so um, now you have the picture for this one. I call it the reptilian smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, uh, yeah, October 29th, 2016. I, when after I went to sleep that night, I went inside of my own head. I knew that I was inside of my own mind and I was walking down this hallway and there were rooms, doorways on both sides of the hallway all the way down. And this was a new level where I hadn't gotten to yet. Now I had already practiced going inside of my own mind. Um, and I'm thinking that a lot of these experiences probably happened that way. I haven't figured that all out yet, but. <laughs> So I went into one of these doorways inside of my mind. And lo and behold, there's two reptilians in there. I'm like, okay, it's not good. Like nobody's supposed to be in here in my mind, except for me. And so I, uh, I kicked them out. I beat them up is what I did. And I, I drew a picture of it. I love it. It's called the reptilian smackdown. And I chased them out of there. Mm. And um, I, I've also chased demons out of my head and you know it's a weird thing to say that um to actually come out and say well i had a demon in my head or a reptilian in my head but i think all of us to a certain extent do uh because of the world we live in and the mind control and just everything that is happening to humans right now uh you know certain entities dark entities will they feed off of us. They feed off of our fear. And they just, they latch right onto us. They'll latch right into our chakra system and they suck that energy right out. They feed right off of us. It's terrible. So it's not, you know, it's not unusual really for me to, to go into my head and say, okay, there's a reptilian here, get out. So that kind of thing started happening, going into my own mind and clearing it out and February 24th, 2018, I went to sleep, go into my own mind, and I can see that things are really jumbled up in there. Like there are wires crisscrossed everywhere, like spider webs. So I go in there and I start detangling the wires. And then I start creating brand new neural passageways in my mind. And you know, you can do this easily. You can create new neural passageways by changing your habits, doing new things, thinking new things. If you get rid of an old habit that's not helping you, that actually physically changes your brain and the electrical signals, the way that they get sent. And you can create new pathways for yourself by thinking new thoughts and starting new hobbies, and you know, just starting brand new things that really work for you and help you. So then uh, July 5th, 2018, I call this one, the world disappears. So I go to the etheric plane and I am there with the star people, the two really old ancient star people that were on the ship. So they're with me again and they are my guides. And it's, it's actually daytime and we're in a, a human town, like a little town but it seems like it's pretty empty. There aren't many people there. Just maybe like 10 humans walking around. And the star lady, she's standing right next to me and she says to me, okay, now it's time for the world to disappear. And we're going to watch this happen. It's this black void is, is coming and it's gonna eat everything up basically. Everything about the human matrix is going to be going into nothing. And I remember this movie from when I was a kid. You might have seen it. It's called The Never Ending Story. And this black void, I think they call it the nothing. Yeah. It comes and it eats the entire world. And then at the end, it's up to this little boy to come up with a, a, like a seed thought to create a brand new world. And he does that. Well, that's, it's kind of like that experience. So I see this blackness coming behind us. So this star lady, she's very kind and, and 
like grandmotherly towards me. And she walks right by my side and we proceed to walk through town towards the water. So that we're like right on the coast. And we walk through a human house. All the doors and windows and all the houses were open. I think everything was opened up. And the couple of humans, like, you know, a handful of humans from town joined us and were walking with us. So we walked through these houses, through a couple of backyards, through another house. Then we come to the last spot, the last spot right before the water. So we're standing in the grass in this backyard. And now we've got a group of humans, um, not that many, there's like, you know, 12, maybe 12 of us. And the grass that we're standing on starts to get black holes in it. And it's kind of frightening, you know, I, I was being as brave as I could be and as calm as I could. Some of the other people were a little stressed out about that. And so I was, the star lady asked me to, you know, go around and try to comfort these people a little bit. And we could still stand. We still had solid ground to stand on, but it was just blackness. Everything, all the houses, the whole town was gone. Not, everything was black, all except for the water. That was the last thing left. So that was that experience. And, and then January 20th, 2020, just last year, I went to the etheric plane, the alternate reality, and I was outside, I was standing on the earth plane, and I was with about five other humans who were in the Star People School with me. And we all knew we didn't even have to say anything. We just knew what was happening. It was, it was time to go. We were leaving the earth plane. So we all flew. We just jumped up in the air and we flew straight up into the sky at an accelerated rate, pretty fast, going straight up. And it was daytime. And, you know, for a while, I just saw like blue sky and the clouds and all that. Um, but as we got further and further up, I could see what looked like almost metal to me, like I could see a reflective surface, like it was a mirror and it was kind of shimmering. And as we got closer and closer, I realized I was looking at water. So we were going up into the water above the earth, water around the earth. And we, so that's what this shimmering was, it was water. It was like an ocean up there. So we, we flew right into it. And as we got into it, I could see that there was another light source from above that shining through the water. And it wasn't too deep. It was like maybe a hundred foot deep. And we burst up out of this water into a clear blue sky with a beautiful orange sunshine. There was, it looked like earth, except it was pristine. It was like lush, like, trees and bushes and flowers and grass and mountains and, and there were humans and there were animals. I saw a guy sitting with his dog and I saw some horses in the distance. There wasn't a lot of people though. Um, so I realized that we were in the world of bliss. That's what I called it. It's basically the plane that's above the earth. And this is where we had all gotten to. Um, and some of the people actually stayed uh, that were in this group with me, they stayed there. But I decided to come back to earth and continue helping people for as long as I could, because I knew that I could go back and forth probably about five times before this doorway shut. So it's like a, it's like a doorway of opportunity there that does shut at a certain time. And so, you know, that was January, 2020. And my meetings with the star people since then have been rather brief. I haven't seen them very much, um, but when I do, it's really, it's like an urgent thing about making sure that everything's ready for this great shift that's gonna happen. And um, I actually, one night I met with a group of who I thought were greys, but they were tall for greys. They were probably four foot tall. And they told me that um, a long time ago, um, 
an evil alien race came to Earth and took over Earth. They created the Vatican and just everything that we have in place right now, all the, all the structures of the matrix that are in place are because of them and everything is controlled by them. And these grays told me that it will all soon vanish. Now they use those, those words, vanish, that it is literally going to disappear. And that's what this whole training I've had my whole life with the star people is to prepare for this shift. So this is where I'm at. Like, I, I just put the book out because, well, I want to tell my story, but I also want other people to know, like other contactees and people who are, are waking up. I want to know that we are going through a shift right now. It's a shift of consciousness and it's, it's a gradual process, but I think there is, there's a window, you know, of opportunity. It's like in 2012, you know, the whole, the Mayan calendar, um, but the world didn't come to an end. What the Mayans said was that a doorway was opening. It was the end of one age and the beginning of another, but that there was a, a doorway opening. And at some point it does shut. So for the people who are waking up now, now's the time to really focus on keeping yourself in a high vibrational frequency as much as you can. I know it's hard, um, but try to be happy and just fill yourself with love and light. And if you are awake and aware and on a good path, then you are protected and you will shift. Like I said, the shift is really about conscious awareness and going up to a new level but there's also going to be physical physical shifts you know we can see a lot now happening with the earth it's pretty obvious there's a lot of earth changes happening and, and you can the, also see kind of a splitting off between i call it the left hand path and the right hand path the people who are awake and the people who are not ready yet you know they're going to stay with the old matrix they're going to go down with the ship basically now of a lot of the uh, the people that i've interviewed they when they were on a craft in space they were they were actually shown a new earth through they were looking through like a, a window hub and uh, one of them asked uh, my my friend um do you like what you, what you see and what was shown were actually like a, this pristine planet like like a bit like earth and there were actually cities small cities on the planet but there were no one you know they, okay. they so you'd have these animals walking to and fro in the city, but you know there weren't any humans. So they they were sort of asking their, um, to, you know, to, to my friend, how did you see? You know, did you like what you were seeing and, and whatnot? But I was wondering, uh, like, were they did they, they ever give you a sort of a timeline or a date when the actual shift's gonna happen? No, no, they haven't given me a, a date. Uh, I think it's probably for a reason. I think, I think maybe it, it changes depending on what's happening with the world. Um, like I said, I think there, I think there is a moment when it, when everything shifts, when everything happens. I also think that, um, but uh, yeah, physically speaking, I think there could be a magnetic pole pole shift. What they, they're talking about the. Uh, what they call the North Pole, uh, I call it the center, the center of the Earth. Um, but there is actually a magnetic North is is moving, you know. And if you study about um, magnetic flips, it actually happens periodically on Earth, and you can see it if you look at the Marianas Trench, just like the deepest place in the ocean. It acts as a recycling center where you've got um, earth being pulled into it, old earth being pulled in, and then new earth comes up out of it. And it's amazing looking. There's like, they call them zebra stripes. They're like white and black stripes. And supposedly when this uh, magnetic flip happens, um, these, these uh, lines reverse or something. It's just like, you know, we are electromagnetic beings and, and so is the earth and everything's about frequency and i i think everything's connected like i think these star people 
are possibly the caretakers of Earth, some of them. It's like a clockwork mechanism that works on a schedule and the star people are like maintaining it and taking care of it. And I think like those of us who are awake and aware and our third eyes is open, they work with us and try to help us to um, get to this level where we can shift up into the next phase where we're supposed to go. But because everything has been corrupted, everything's not working normally right now. And so, you know, we need a little bit of help. So now that's, I think that's been my, my whole life basically with the star people is well, getting ready for, for what's to come. I don't think it's very far away. So it's going to happen within our lifetime, you believe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, what you were talking about, you know, the whole control system, that really reminded me of uh, Barbara Mersiniak's The Pleiadian Message. Okay. Um, so she does talk about, you know, aliens coming and then the whole control system. And um, now when you're talking about the new earth, yeah, to, to go there, does there need to be like an actual death of the body? Because you were talking about the, the whole like oceans taking over the planet. Right. Um, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, to me, I, I used to ask myself this, am I going to die? You know, am I going to be in my third body or lots of people want to know that. But I think at this point, um, that doesn't really matter <laughs> because I realize now when I'm out of body, it is just as real, if not more real than this place. And when I'm there, I have so much more awareness and capability. I can do so much more. And, you know, I can create anything I can think of. I can fly, I can walk through walls, you know, I can, I can go exploring, doing anything I want. So this etheric plane where I go is really freeing, you know, it's it, being in a physical body is very limiting. So I don't know if the shift will happen with our physical bodies or not, but I know that we'll still be ourselves and our conscious awareness will be very much intact and we will we'll have greater per perception, we'll have greater ability, and it, it'll be really good for the humans who shift. Okay. I thought in 2012 there, you know, we would have been like physically relocated to another planet. Yeah. That, that wasn't the case, but. I'm sure a bunch of us were hoping that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get to the, uh, your, one of the, your, your images called uh, pulled out of body. Okay. What happened with that? Sorry. Well, that's um, that's what happens when the star people come to get me. That's what used to happen in, in the early days in my early 20s when they were teaching me how to go out of body, how to be in the right frequency to interact with them. Now, I don't have to do that. Now, I, I just go out of body by myself. But they were they would come into my bedroom and they would pull me out of my body. And... Um, one night I was laying there and I was wide awake and I had my eyes open and they were, I knew that they were near and I could hear the weird cartoon noises and stuff outside. And then I heard somebody talking to me and they said, um, you have to go to sleep, you know, so we can come visit you. And I said, well, you know, it's hard to go to sleep because I'm really anxious and, um, you know, you're making a bunch of noise. I can't go to sleep like this. And I say, can you help me go to sleep? And they said, okay, well, we'll try. And so I felt, I laid there in the bed and I felt all of my muscles relax. And I felt like my body was going to sleep, but my awareness was not. I was aware, like, and I kept my eyes open. And so the next thing I know, I'm, I'm kind of being pulled out of my bed by my shoulders pulling me and they're they're kind of small and they're pulling me i'm going down towards the floor a little bit because they're pulling me out of my bed and uh i looked and, and i saw them and i think this is the same night that my my daughter was in the bed with me she was only about three years old at the time probably and she sat up in the bed and she physically sat up and she said mommy where are you going physically 
<clears throat> and I yanked myself back into my body. I was like, sorry, guys, I'm not going. And, uh, and, I, and I physically woke up and I gave her a hug and I said, it's okay, I'm not going to go anywhere. And I, I just stayed there with her. But I yeah, I, I became aware that they were just pulling my conscious awareness right out of my physical body. Are your children also experiencers like yourself? Um, my oldest daughter did when she was little. Um, probably, probably about the ages of, well, I guess she was three. See, I don't really know when it ended. Maybe three to five, for sure she was. And sometimes we would even go on the ships together and we would talk about it in the morning. Um, I had an experience one night, which kind of involved the whole family. Um, my husband and my two daughters were with me. And so we were all asleep and we all had a different experience and we talked about it in the morning. So what I saw was I woke up in the bed but I wasn't physical, I was out of body. So I woke up in the bed and I sat up and I saw um, one of my daughters was getting ready to go up through the ceiling, through a hole in the ceiling because the store people were gonna take her right up. And I was like, oh, I wanna go too, you know? And uh, it turned out, I don't think that I did go. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember all of that, it's been a while. But in the morning when we woke up, yeah, we all had an experience that we, we remembered. And um, my two little girls were talking about it. And at the time they were about, I guess one of them was five and the other one was 10. And so the younger one was saying um, that she saw lights out over the road. Like we were, our house was right near the, the street. She saw like colorful lights in the sky or the road and and the older daughter says yeah that's where they were you know that's where their ship was and so you know there were times when everybody talked about it together and we're all aware of, the, of it and they all knew about my experiences of course and well we've, we've had a very interesting life together but yeah they've they've had their own experiences but not quite like mine i have really uh really good conscious recall and I've never done uh, hypnosis uh, to remember anything. I, I'm kind of avoiding it because I don't want to, you know, put any false memories or anything in there. Okay. But um, do you know why this is all happening to you? Like, do you have any like pre-birth memories or something that might explain why all, all of this is happening? When I was four years old, I was I was pretty aware. I was pretty awake and. It's funny because I remember my mother asked me where I came from before I came here when I was four years old. And I said, which is a little creepy, I said, I'm sorry, mommy, but God won't let me tell you that. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. That's okay. But uh, at four years old, I knew that I came here, I incarnated here to help humanity. Four years old, I knew that. I knew that, um, that I was going to forget who I was. As I got a little bit older and went through indoctrination, I would forget who I was, but that uh, I would remember before the end, before the end of my physical life, I would remember who I was again and everything would be fine. And I knew that it would be a lonely path, but I, I just really felt, you know, really strong inside and I, that's why I came here. So <laughs> the whole the entire time I've been here, I feel like I've had like one foot in this world and one foot in the alternate reality. And I really, I'm really good at seeing um, <clears throat> my experience, ghosts, and I, I do this thing where if somebody in my family is going to pass over, they usually come and tell me about it about a year beforehand in a in a vivid dream. Yeah. I've had that happen three times now. And um, uh, the first time it happened, I think I was 21. And my grandmother was coming to me. Um, and this is about the time when I was started recording my dreams because of what Edgar Casey 
said, he, Edgar Cayce said to write your dreams down every morning because it would help you through your life. And it does. Uh, especially if you're somebody like me who has incredible experiences. Uh, I've, I've been writing my dreams down since 1987. Hmm. So I have all of this recorded. Um, but anyway, my grandmother was coming to me and she was asking me to help her weed her garden. And I had to kind of figure out the dream symbolism, you know? And so like three times she came and asked me and the last time it started snowing out. And in my dreams, snow usually means death. And so I realized I better go and talk to my grandma. So uh, I was a little nervous. It was funny. I actually wrote her a letter and mailed it, although she lived like a couple streets away from me. But I was just so nervous to go talk to her. So she, uh, she got my letter and she asked me to come over and, and talk with her. And I did. And I told her about the dreams. And I told her that uh, she might be getting ready to leave. She might be getting ready to go into spirit. And I told her what I thought it would be like after she got there. And it's so amazing. Um, so after I had this, and she also told me about some experience she had too. Um, but trying to make a long story short here. Um, so after I had gone and talked with her, it wasn't much later she came to me in a dream and she told me that she was going to die next August, uh, like the second week of August. And so I, I immediately went, I told my mother and my aunt who was there visiting, I said, I've been having these dreams about grandma and I think she's going to die in August. And they were like, okay, <laughs> you know, they didn't really know what to say about that. But as it turned out, she passed away on August 20th. And afterwards, um, it was about a month where I didn't see her, but about one month after her passing, she came to visit me in a dream. And she told me that I was almost right about what I thought about what happens when you die. She's like, you were close, well, you're almost right. But it was incredible. And, and every time um, my, my other grandmother did the same thing and then my father. So I knew a year ahead of time for all of them. And, um, and then they, they all did the same thing. After they passed over, they went to sleep for about a month and then they, woke up and like my dad, I know, even though he has passed in a spirit, I know that he is alive. I see him and I interact with him um, in my dreams and he's, he's busy doing stuff. Like he's continuing his work in this other place. So I, and I also had a near death experience in 2010. So I, I went there and I came back and, and I can tell you that um, death is, could be really easy and really simple and it merely is a doorway to the rest of your life hmm. it's, it's nothing to be scared of you know if you're if you're calm about it you will just gently pass over and and be back home yeah so amazing wow oh, you've been through a lot <laughs> really it's, it's yeah. life-changing and i'm really hoping those listening in do like get something from today's interview because uh, you've talked about you know a lot of subjects and uh um, there was one last image, or maybe two, that you've sent me a, an image of a UFO. You're in front of it. Where, where was okay. where was the photo taken? Oh, um, okay, the one that's behind me. Yeah. Okay, that was taken in the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Yeah, and that's that's another incredible story. You can read about it in the book. But okay. um, Good. yeah, during that trip. That was on the way back from that trip to Virginia. And I didn't even see the UFO in the sky. And uh, the person who took the picture didn't see it either. We, we saw it later. Uh -huh. And um, same thing with the other, there's another picture. Now I'm confused because you said you're reading the first book. Yeah. Oh, I see, I sent you pictures from the second book. Okay, these UFO okay. pictures are in the second book. Okay. And there's another UFO picture also, I took that in my backyard, but same thing, I didn't see the UFO in the sky, but my camera picked it up. I even made a short video of it. I zoomed in to the exact spot to make a short video, but didn't know it until like four days later when I looked at my photos on the computer and I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Okay. Yeah, this, I call it the, uh, uh, 
uh, the orb, like the blue, blue light UFO, the blue orb, I call it. This incredible photo, and you can see it online. I've got the link in the book there. Um, it's an, an incredible photo of this orb. It's like a silver metallic orb with like a bluish aura around it. But you can see an energy field around this thing. And I don't know how big it really is. You could see it over the treetops. And I don't know if it was small and really close or if it was far away and okay. it just looked smaller. But that's, that's an incredible photo. And how about the MyLab drawing? That my lab drawing, I am actually an underground base and I am looking down into, we're in like a cylinder that's underground and it's completely underground. It's a little bit of sunlight coming in the top, but those are lights. Those are like the different levels, the different floors inside of this underground military base. And there's people, there's humans living in there and there's reptilians in there too. And you know, the further you go down in this place, the more secretive it becomes. And uh, I was just like up on the top level. I ended up going down to the bottom, not by my own free will, but uh, that was a pretty scary experience, but I got through it. And yeah, there's definitely, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on underground. There's actually cities. There's cities and there's tunnels connecting these cities underground. And it seems like a lot of the uh, nuclear testing they did in the United States back in the 40s, 50s, or whatever that was, they were creating um, underground bases. Okay. And this huge tube that I was inside of, like a huge metal tube was inserted down, down in there, down into the ground. Wow. So you've seen a lot, at least for one person. Yeah, yeah and it's... It's, it's probably because, you know, I can remember it all consciously. It's not really hidden from me. And so I think about these things, you know, not just at night when I'm experiencing it, but when I wake up and I'm analyzing the data, I'm looking through all of my notes and stuff happens physically too all the time. Like now that we're here in Uruguay, I mean, we can go out and we can see lights flying around like almost night on a nightly basis. And, oh. and I could talk out loud to the star people and I'll be like, hi, how are you guys doing? You know, and I'll see a little shooting star or something go by. But yeah, I, I think the physical world is really intertwined, like meshed into the astral and the etheric. And so many things happen physically that people can't explain, but it's because they got a really limited view on what physical reality really is. Well, it comes back to the, the fact that, you know, we've been uh, conditioned from birth. We do tend to lose a lot. Um, like when, uh, like I, we uh, talked about earlier, uh, I would have visitations as a kid, but as, as everything stopped as soon as I started school. As soon as I finished college with my second degree, everything started over, started back. Okay. So that's when I started getting the visions and, uh, you know, the voices and the, the whole ET thing started to kick in ghosts. Um, right. So, yeah, well, that's I guess interesting. We are yeah, because a similar thing happened to me. It was like when I was little, like up until about eight years old or so, I was having all these nightly experiences. But then and then I did have more like when I was 11, but for the most part, it kind of faded out, like when I was going to school and I had a lot of other things on my mind, you know, really keeping me busy and distracted. And it wasn't until around 20 or so when I really remembered again, I was like, oh yeah. Wow. So uh, as a closing statement, do you have like a message to, to those watching regarding, uh, you know, current events? Yeah, I mean, this, this is gonna pass. I mean, everything, everything's happening at once. The world, the old matrix system is falling apart. We're watching it fall apart. And some people are so caught up in it that they're just gonna go down with it. That's their path. Good news is in the long run, they'll end up in the same place we are. They will all go back home in the long run, but some people just aren't there yet. Um, for people who are awake and aware, you're gonna be fine. You're, you're protected as long as you have 
love in your heart, you're going to shift. You're you're going to see more things. You're going to be able to perceive more and, and do more. And this is a real shift in consciousness. It's a real big step for human for humankind. And we're going through it right now. And it does happen gradually. So, you know, it's not that traumatic when the actual moment of that shift happens. We'll be okay. We'll remember who we are. We're not it's not gonna be traumatizing. For us who are all in a good high frequency, it's gonna be a good thing. And we're, we're moving towards that now. So you've gotta kind of let go of the old world and start focusing on what you want in your life. Start focusing on creating a brand new reality for yourself. You manifest your own reality bubble around you. You manifest it with your thoughts and your actions. Mm -hmm. So just focus on love and light and just be as happy as you can. We'll get through it. And if those who want to purchase her book, they're available on Amazon, I think. No, I am not selling them on Amazon this time. I okay. decided not to go with Amazon. I'm selling them on my website, Alien okay. Abduction Health. Okay. So I'll, I'll add the links to the description box below. And uh, that's awesome. So thank you so much for coming on. I really feel blessed that you chose us to say yes to come on because uh, you've got an amazing <laughs> thank story. Thank you. I was very excited to be here. Yeah. And uh, to those watching, hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, more interviews coming up, and I'll see you guys next time. So take care, Bye. everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Gray, and thanks for watching today's episode. If you are an abductee, contactee, or experiencer, and you believe that your story could help others, please feel free to contact me through my YouTube channel email. When it comes to experiencers, the ET phenomena, and the future, remember, truth will out.